as with all my travels before my first trip to Morocco, I did some research about the country. The culture, history, work that have been done previously by other photographers, as well as reading up on recent news. I try not to go into much depth with this research, since one of the things that I enjoy the most when I visit the country for the first time is discovering it through my own experiences. The people, the light, the stories, stories that often differ from what can be seen in the mainstream media. I think it's about finding a balance between being informed and leaving enough room to maintain a sense of wonder. But one of the news that caught my attention said something like, self-driving rubbers tested in Mars like Morocco, European Space Agency. That headline made me wonder, made me intrigued about this concept of how it feels to be in a place that scientists believe that it's like the planet Mars. And after four years coming and going for different reasons, because of the project, uh, because of the workshop with the Royal Society, I had this body of work, this concept that I call There is Life on Mars. That project uh, has been published in different magazines like National Geographic, I've done exhibitions, and one of the pictures that people like the most is the one that we're going to talk about today. But because people like it doesn't mean that it's good. So let's go to the screen and try to figure out why I believe that this is a good photograph. It is said that the Nawa music and dance can evoke uh, all spirits who drive out evil, cure psychological ills, or remedy scorpion stings. And their trance-like music has even gained appeal on an international level. This is how they sound. I'm not showing you a video, precisely because I think that photography is a great medium to suggest, to evoke feelings. And that's precisely what I wanted to do capturing this picture, is to evoke something. The first instinct that we have when we see a scene with lots of movement and, and things happening and people and all of that is to freeze the moment. But we often forget about that sometimes we have to just show how it feels to be there, how is the energy of the moment. And I think that uh, that's what made me decide to go for a long exposure. But long exposures are tricky. It's not enough just to have something moving in the frame. You have to try to compose in the same way that you would compose anything else, taking in account the background, the layering, what's happening, who is going to be your main subject, even if the main subject is not appearing very clear, like it's the case here. If you see my videos, probably you can tell now that one of the first things that I look for is how is the background is going to help me or not. And in this case, I look for the cleanest part of the of the room but the one thing that i wanted to include was um, this door here why is that well i think that one of the keys on the pictures that i like to do is to have this sense of depth and i noticed that there were people coming and going through this door like this guy that is here uh, in the frame that give me the sense of depth that I think is quite interesting to have. Another thing that I was looking for, and I had to work the scene quite a bit of time, was to have the people in the right place. Not just this guy here, but also someone that was going to be my anchor, my starting point. And I waited until I saw that this guy was doing the circles in about rule of thirds in the frame. So. 
that's when I started. This will be, as you can see, the main subject. Even though you cannot really tell who he is or anything like that, but it's positioned in the right place at the right time. Another thing that I find important in this kind of pictures, and that's why I think that movement is tricky, you have to know what direction the motion is going. And in this case, they were doing different things. This dance is quite complex. They go as a group up and down. They go in circles as a group, but they also go in circles by themselves, um, which is what's happening here. So I did quite a bit of pictures because it was hard to tell what motion they were doing, what movement they were doing. And I choose this one in particular because this arm here. You, you can tell or you can imagine that they are moving towards right in this case because the arm and the hand of this of this person it's giving you this sense of direction which i think it's important as well so what makes this a good picture i think it's a mix of everything composition is fairly simple it's rule of thirds plus rule of odds a little bit of depth with layering the relationship between all the dancers, it's implied in the motion and in the composition itself. What else if it's not a formal, quite orthodox way of composing? It's precisely the lack of perfection. I think that the motion, the fact that you cannot really identify who is the people there, and you don't really know what's happening, what's going on, gives you this sense of mystery, this sense of uh, wonder and you want to know more about what's going on so I would say sometimes let go of the perfection and learn a little bit about everything that you know and and try to capture and to share with your audience how it feels to be there what's the emotional aspect of the situation that you are photographing I will tell you try to experiment with things Forget about the technical aspect, the ISO, the megapixels and all of that stuff because this picture can be done with whatever camera you have in hand. So this will be the first episode of why this picture works or why I think this is a good picture. I'm still working in the title. If you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments, please. And I will try to figure out all the pictures that can be interesting to analyze like this one and thank you very much for watching